Dr. Nazra suggested I do the entire lesson or at least one problem in uh, Hulk Hogan voice, but I think I would lose my voice if I did that for too long. All right, Unit 3, Day 1, September 8th, Simplifying Rational Functions. Again, first five letters of rational is ratio, so a rational function is a quotient ratio of polynomials or of polynomial functions. It can be written as p of x over q of x where p and q are polynomials. And we'll need to say that q of x can't be 0. So a ratio function is a ratio of functions, rational function, um, where the, both the functions are polynomials. <coughs> Performing operations on ratio functions uh, is similar in many ways to performing operations on numerical fractions. Right, so like ratios, whether it's numbers or fraction or variables, it's kind of the same process. So we get a little bit of review here. Two sevenths plus three fourths. What does it take to add fractions? What do we need? Common, Common denominator. <coughs> so first fraction needs a four. Second fraction needs a seven. So 28 in the bottom. Uh, 8 plus 21 in the top would be 29 over 28. It's like, yeah, great work. What is that? 6th grade, 7th grade, 8th grade, somewhere in there, adding fractions. Now we get to number 2, and it's like, oh, that's a little bit harder, but it's the same process. If I want to add fractions, uh, I need a common denominator. So this first one needs an x minus 1, top and bottom. And the second one needs an x plus 2 in the top and in the bottom. And so now I've got the common denominator, x minus 1, x plus 2. Now I just need to clean up the top. So I'm going to distribute the 3. You know what? Actually, I'm going to write it once first, because if I write it like this, some of you are going to be very tempted to cancel things if you write it like this. Look at that x minus 1 top and bottom and x plus 2 top and bottom. Yes or no for canceling those? No, no but why not? I got to distribute and they're being added. So like they're not eligible to be canceled. The top ones aren't. The bottom ones are eligible to be canceled, but the top ones are not. <coughs> so let's cancel, collect like terms, and then we'll see if something is can cancel. Usually not, but occasionally. So 3x minus 3 plus 4x squared plus 8x. I'm going to be lazy and not rewrite that denominator while I'm working in the numerator. 4x squared plus 11x minus 3. And then sometimes that will factor. And if it will factor, we need to factor it. Uh, let's see. 4 times 3 is 12. And so I can get, I, I think I can get there. It would have to be 4x and x, and it'd have to be 3 and 1, um, where the the 12 is positive and the 1 is negative, and that would that would work. Over x minus 1, x plus 2. Okay. Now it's eligible to cancel, but of course now nothing will cancel. Big picture, the process is the same. Get a common denominator, add the numerators, look for things to reduce. Exactly like you did with number fractions, we work them with variable fractions. All right. Oh, yes, you may. Number three looks a little bit worse because there's three terms to add. What should we do first on number three? Uh, 
like I, I could just jump right in and multiply them all by like the other denominators and that would work it would just be the long way around let's factor the first one and then we realize that we were a lot closer to a common denominator than maybe we thought we were so the second term needs an x plus 5 And the third term needs an x minus 5. So I'm, I'm good on my denominator now. It's x plus 5, x minus 5. The numerator, x distribute the 1 plus x plus 5. And then, why did I pick this one? What do I need to be careful about on this next step? the negative. Make sure you distribute a negative 2x. So minus 2x squared plus 10x. So let's see, negative 2x squared plus 12x plus 5. All over x plus 5, x minus 5. And here's sort of the annoying thing is I have to look and see if that will factor. So I would need, the quick way is I would need, is there a number that multiplies to 10 and adds to 12, or a pair of numbers that add multiply to 10, 5 times 2, and add to 12? No, that doesn't work. So that's as far as we can go with that one. Number four, we'll factor the bottom. X plus four, X minus one. That's nice because that means they're close to having a common denominator. What does the what does the second term need? It just needs an X plus four. So once you see if you can finish that one. So again, multiply top and bottom by X plus four to make the denominators match. Careful with the minus sign and be alert. If you're working the problem, you stop here on your own. If you look at answer choices, be careful because they might take a negative out front. Number five. Two factoring problems. So we're going to hope that they have some factors in common because then it will be easier to get to a common denominator. And they do. They both have an x plus 4. So it's maybe not as bad as we thought. But factor first because then you recognize that they ha do have some stuff in common and that makes getting a common denominator a little easier. So the first fraction needs an x minus 1 and the second fraction needs an x minus 4. And so now we're good on the denominator. Wouldn't it be x? Uh -oh. It would be x plus 1. Thank you. Thank you for catching that before I went too far. Because <coughs> that definitely changes the rest of that problem. So 3x plus 3. Again with the minus sign. We like to do lots of minuses in the example to make sure you're careful with that distributing the minus sign. Minus 3x plus 12. Again, it, you can be lazy and leave off, leave off the denominator like while you're working, especially if the numerator is really complicated. You don't want to be writing those three terms again and again and again when nothing's going on with them. As long as you don't you don't get to the end and it like blocks up 15 as your answer, right? You still have that denominator there. funny, but that is acceptable to do that. <coughs> right, multiplication of fractions. How do you multiply fractions? So easy. 
you don't want to answer or don't know how to answer. And you're like, just multiply, question mark? Um, one way to do it would be multiply across. 2 times 3 is 6. 7 times 4 is 28. Then we start reducing. Um, 2 will go into both of those. So 3 fourteenths. Is there a better, maybe not better, a different way to do that? I might reduce the 2 and the 4. Yeah, reduce first. That way you don't have to multiply as big a number. Like It didn't really matter here. But in general, if you could get smaller numbers from the start, it would make your life a little easier. So I would say reduce first, but it doesn't matter. <coughs> reduce first or reduce last. Either way, it doesn't matter, but definitely reduce. Right? You lose points if you leave it as 628. Right? We'll do the same thing with number seven. It doesn't have numbers, it's got letters, but it's the same process. So let's factor everybody. Maybe I should slow down on my factoring to try to prevent mistakes. Oh, I should have called on people to factor. That's not hard. So factor everything. And then definitely do not multiply all that stuff out, right? You'd have a x to the fourth in the bottom and an x cubed in the top. It's a giant mess on your hand. The point is to factor and reduce. So there's an x minus 1 that'll go away. But only one of them, right? you got to match them up one to one. You can't cancel two of them in the top. Uh, an x plus 3 will go away. So I'm left with x minus 1 in the top, x plus 2, and x minus 3 in the bottom. And then we ran into this briefly a little bit in that last unit. If we canceled an x minus 1, we need to be careful. Um, that means when it was in the denominator, it was clear we couldn't use 1. Now that it's canceled, it's like, wait a minute, what are we... You better be careful. So I'm going to say x can't be 1 and x can't be negative 3. Now, x also can't be negative 2 or 3, but that's clear from the problem. Once you've reduced, maybe it's not so clear. In fact, it's definitely not clear. If you just walked upon this, there's no reason you would exclude 1 or negative 3. But you cancel them, so you have to make note that you cancel them, basically. If you cancel top and bottom, make sure you sort of make a note of that by saying you can't use those values anymore. <coughs> um, why don't you try number eight? It's just a giant factoring problem. It's not even a giant factoring problem. It's just factor three things and then look for all the right things to cancel. And be careful about making note of what cancels. Yeah, make sure you leave in there. X can't be 1. X can't be negative 2. Because we canceled. OK, did I do something wrong? All right, dividing rational functions. Well, we don't really, in this course and beyond, we don't hardly ever see that little division symbol again. It's kind of gone for us. Instead, we use a fraction bar to represent division. Um, and in this case, I don't even know that we really usually do a complex fraction. When you see division of fractions, either way, what do you think? How do you divide fractions? So I heard both things. Keep it, change it, flip it. That's sort of the shorthand rule. It's accurate. It's fine. And the more sort of official way is multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. But most people are just keep it, change it, flip it type people. So keep the first, 
change its multiplication, flip the bottom, and so you don't ever really do a division problem. You just you turn your division problem into a multiplication problem. So again, we can multiply first, or we can reduce first, whatever you like. But reducing is probably the better way to go. 5 and 15 would be a 3 in the bottom. 2 and 6 would be a 3 in the bottom. Here's a, a lovely answer I get sometimes. All of the top canceled out, and 3 times 3 is 9. Please don't do that. Yes, it is 1 ninth. That's a terrible, hopefully none of y'all would do that. Once in a while, someone's like, ah, I canceled all the, all the top. It's gone. Well, not really. It reduced to one. Number 10. Let's see. That looks terrible as it is, but we'll keep it, change it, flip it. Ooh, can I do two things at once? What, what else would I like to do in addition to flipping it? Factor it. So I'm going to do two things at once. I'm going to flip the bottom and factor it. And then look, look for stuff to cancel. So the x's will cancel. The x minus 2's will cancel. And I'm left with x plus 2 over 3. Uh, but I need to say x can't be 0, x can't be 2, because I canceled those factors. On 11, because if I, I don't, if I flip the bottom, I didn't flip all of that, not like each piece, so that would be a mess on my hand. What I want to do first is um, fix the top, fix the bottom, and then keep it, change it, flip it. Or another way to say that is I, I can't keep it, change it, flip it until I have one fraction over another fraction. Maybe that's a better way to say it. So don't keep it, change it, flip it unless it's one fraction over another fraction. So, well, yeah. To fix the top, I'd like to get rid of the, maybe clear the top. I don't know how you want to phrase that. I want to multiply by 5 to make the denominator go away. So I'll multiply top and bottom by 5. That'll make that this denominator go away. What else should I multiply to make denominators go away? X. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by 5x. <coughs> that will clear out at least the denominators within the fraction. It'll give me an easier fraction to deal with. So be careful here. Distributing the fives cancel, that leaves an x. x times x is x squared. On the second term, 3 times 5x is 15x. And then in the bottom, 5x times 4 is 20x. And on the second term, the x's cancel, and I'm left with 10. I can't say for sure if anything reduces. I certainly can't reduce 15 and 10 or 15 and 20 or x and x because everything's being added and subtracted. So I'm going to factor what's left and then look to see if anything will reduce. It won't, so we're good. Uh oh, did I mess something up? Um, 5x times 2 over x, the x's would cancel, and then 5 times 2 is 10. Because that 5x has to go to both pieces. All right, number 12. What would you like to multiply by on number 12 to, to clear out the fractions in fractions? Let's do 5x to the top and the bottom to keep things fair, keep my fraction the same. So distribute the 5x, 
The 5 cancels on the first one. The X cancels on the second one. And in the bottom, I have 5X times X minus 5. Well, that's, that's nice. The X minus 5 cancel. But if we cancel, we need to make sure we remember to say X can't be 5 anymore. Alright, last one. Uh, what should we multiply by top and bottom on this one? cancel out my denominators. Um, not 2x, but x plus 2 and 3. I would need both of them. So in the top, the x plus 2's cancel. Uh, 5 times 3 is 15. In the bottom, uh, if you need to slow it down and show more work, you certainly can. One third times x plus two times three minus two over x plus two times x plus two times three. So people get lost. They, they forget to distribute both things to both pieces. Threes cancel. X plus twos cancel. And so I've got 15 over x plus 2 minus 6. So 15 over x minus 4. I don't know. I feel like we don't have easy days very often in here. But if any of them qualify as easy, I would say this one does. Assignments Worksheet 1.